Well, it's an issue that has traditionally divided some conservative Christians, the environment. For decades, many Christians have cast doubt on the science behind global warming, but that is beginning to change. Jonathan Merritt is a Baptist minister who says that evangelicals need to start accepting that climate change is real and not a political issue. Evangelical Christians tr traditionally do not buy into climate change as much as other groups. In fact, uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us this morning. I want to ask you, first of all, about why uh, we don't see traditionally evangelical Christians believing that uh, climate change and global warming is a proven fact. Well, thanks so much for having me on, Kieran. Your question is really, your, the answer to your question is really two parts. First of all, um, religion and science have always had a, a, a tumultuous relationship since Galileo, and there's sort of that distrust between the two camps, and I think sometimes it's, it's unnecessary. That's the first reason, but here in America, and so more specifically to our context, uh, it, it's more of a historical answer, and that is in the after the 1970s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s, there was a division that occurred in response to the, the Cultural Revolution. And so there was a politicization of America, and the right stole God and the left stole green. And you never saw those things together in the same sentence until now. I mean, I've just written a book uh, called Green Like God because I think those things belong together. I think our God has a lot to say about what, we're see what we see going on in our world right now. And you say that you actually had an aha moment about global warming back in college. You're now 27. Explain why this issue became so personal to you. Yeah, actually, it's, it's fascinating. I, I became an environmentalist at a Southern Baptist seminary. Uh, not, not really a, a story you hear every day, but I was sitting in class, and I had a professor at Southeastern Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. He was teaching about revelation, that God speaks to us both through his word, the Bible, and through the natural world around us, which the Apostle Paul talks about in Romans 1. And he said something that changed my life. He said, when, when we destroy God's creation, which is God's revelation. It's similar to tearing a page out of the Bible. And for me, an evangelical Christian who has such a high regard for, for God's Word, uh, that struck me. And, uh, and it really signaled, uh, it really began in me uh, a shift in perspective. And I began to, to really search this issue out uh, more carefully. You know, it is interesting because uh, politics and religion uh, oftentimes merge in ways that, uh, that, that don't seem to necessarily uh, be true to the roots of the Bible, I guess you could say. Uh, back in 2006, Pastor Rick Warren was one of 86 evangelical Christian leaders to back initiatives fighting global warming. Um, we also take a look at Pope Benedict, who is now referred to by many as the, quote, Green Pope because of speaking out on issues of climate change. Are Christian leaders starting to teach about climate change as a moral issue, much like poverty? Yeah, you know, I think that there is a movement going on. I think God's on the move. I think God's people are on the move. I think people are beginning to rediscover uh, what our, our scriptures say about these things. Right there in, in the first chapter of Genesis, we find something interesting, that the Sierra Club was not the first entity to say that this world is good. God did. He said this creation is a good thing, and he asked us to take care of it. And so uh, people like Rick Warren, other evangelical Christians who have surveyed God's Word and seen this are now looking at the world around us and, and they are speaking with one voice saying, we can do better. You know, you have a, a, an uphill battle, it seems, at least according to some of the polling. A recent Pew poll, uh, and this was actually from April of 08, asked, is there solid evidence the Earth is warming? And let's put it up right now because there really is a difference uh, when it comes to how people identify themselves in terms of their religion. And when you take a look, white evangelical Protestants, only 34% believe there's solid evidence about global warming and uh, because yeah. of human activity. Right, right. Well, uh, you know, it goes back to what we said before, is that this issue has become so political, and uh, many environmentalists, uh, they, they support things that evangelicals can never support. Uh, you know, like they take a, a pro-abortion stance. We, we as evangelicals, we have to oppose that. Our, our faith demands it. And so that makes us a little skeptical, because those in the environmental camp, we disagree with on so many issues. Right. And, and I think that's unfortunate. So how do you bridge that gap then? Because the point is, as I said, when religious and politics sometimes merge together, so if you feel like you're, you know, fighting against a lot of the ideology of a certain group or a certain, you know, uh, group of people who have beliefs one way, what do you do when you're actually with them on a major, major uh, belief, which is that, that we have to do something about climate change? 
Well, I think you have to do two things. I think the first thing is, and, and people always laugh at this, they, they think it's such a Sunday school answer, but you go back to the Word of God. You always begin, as, a, as a, a follower of Jesus Christ, you always begin with the Bible. And we find a beautiful picture in the Bible of a creation that God loves, that He wants to see flourish, and that He's asked us to take care of. And then once you have that biblical perspective through that prism, you begin to look at the, the problems that we see all around our world. You have to get educated. You know, it's never been easier to become a, a so-called expert. I find in churches today, you'll talk to someone for 30 minutes and you're wondering, is this person a scientist, an economist, a policy expert, a theologian, an ethicist? Uh, we've got to be very honest and, 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 and have integrity as followers of Jesus Christ to admit where we're experts and where we're not. But it begins with the study of the Word of God. All right. Well, it was great talking to you this morning, Jonathan Merritt, author of Green Light God. We appreciate it.